2018. I'm Michael Magid, live from Hollywood, California. With me is Angel City co-owner Saskia Weber. I, Hello. I had to call it out that way because you got the Angel City shirt going on yes. right now as we uh as we speak uh no omar zini for pro gk academy today uh unfortunately we've got some uh some other things going on in the world right now and we uh we wish everyone out there the best uh who might be dealing with uh with these certain situations um but instead we got somebody else who enjoys editing that's right <laughs> that's how we start this off right here uh we have the head of academy goalkeeping for birmingham city football club matt doyle matt what is up dude not too bad, not too bad. Not long in from work, so I'm, I'm a happy man because I'm back to work, so uh, I'm all good. No, thanks for the invite. No, no, we're excited about having you, man. I mean, I think one of the really cool things about, uh, about bringing you on now is the fact is that we're actually back at training. You know, a lot of the clubs are actually back at training. People are back out there. So it's no longer just kind of like concept, but now people are actually able to put some of these, uh, these ideas and, and, and methodologies that they're learning during the quarantine process and actually put them into – into practice so kind of like uh before we kind of start out you know matt for like some of our audience who might not be familiar with who you are maybe they didn't intend your world famous webinar uh this summer um why don't you kind of break down kind of what you do for birmingham and how that all happened yeah hopefully no one falls asleep when i'm when i'm saying it. i'll be as quick as i can yeah so yeah as you said head of academy goalkeeping so i oversee the program um from from the babies, so sort of seven eights uh, up through to the the young pros, really. So um, I've been there about two and a half years now. Uh, so it's a it's a it's a good project. I, I'm really enjoying it. It's a good club, good academy. Um, and before that, I suppose I've had a bit of a an interesting path. So I've I've been at Stoke before that, in, in the Premier League when they were in the Premier League, similar role. Um, so I was there for four years, and I've been at a League Two team called Barnet on two occasions, sort of doing some first team work and also academy work and in between all that madness of the last what 12 years I've actually I've worked abroad in Malaysia as well in their um, I suppose it's their Premier League so it's the Malaysian Super League um, so I had like nine months out there um, so you could say in the last 12 years I've, uh, I've done a few different not not like jumped around for fun but I've had a nice sort of cut few years here and there and it's, it's sort of um, yeah it's rounded off quite nicely now at Birmingham so uh, now you're going to have to listen to, to me and see what I do at Birmingham, unfortunately. Well, I mean, the Malaysia thing, I didn't even know about the Malaysia thing, man. That must have been a, kind, of, kind of a cool experience. Yeah, oh, incredible. I, I, I don't think a day goes by where I don't reminisce a little bit. It sounds a bit cringy, but it was a beautiful place. It was Penang, so it was, um, it was a beautiful place. Uh, and obviously, just living and working abroad is an experience I'd recommend for anyone. So it was just nice to see something different and, and enjoy it. And like I said, it was a nice place to live. So uh, it was a, it was a win-win really. And it was a great experience. So yeah, I'm surprised you didn't, I thought Omar might have touched you up on that one and, and give you a heads up on that, but. Oh, oh no, he did. He did. He did not. He liked to like to save that curveball right there. Sox, have you ever been to Malaysia? I have not. You have... I'm not. I'd love to, but That's... I mean, I agree with you hundred percent. It's just like me getting to play pro in Japan for three years. is just incredible. So it's, we've always talked about it on the show, if you get the chance to coach or play abroad, do it. Yeah. Cause I mean, I'm sure there's probably a lot of things that were, uh, that kind of, that kind of, you know, changed your landscape in regards to going over there and kind of seeing things from a different perspective because, you know, the majority of your education had been UK based, right? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. It, I mean, it did, listen, it came out of the blue as well. Like, like I think most things in, in football, but I've never been a, a massive fan, if you like, of, heading towards that first team environment working with senior players but I'd done it previously before at Barnet and um, I suppose it was just another good forgetting about where it was and like I've just said the experience it was another good challenge for me to work with um, well it's their top league out there so it's the it's their Premier League so it was um, yeah not not only was the cultural stuff and the new experiences but the the and like the new country and new staff and everything like that it was just getting out of your comfort zone really and seeing if you can like I, I knew nothing about the league. I'm, I'm not going to lie. And I, I actually knew nothing about the football over there. So it was. It, it, I think it all happened in like, I think it was about four weeks time, believe it or not, before I literally touched down in Malaysia. So it was over Christmas as well. So it, it was a crazy time, but like a, a good crazy, if, if that makes sense. So yeah, yeah, I'd recommend anyone watching do it. Yeah. 
I think it's I think it's funny because like uh, you know all the players in the in the UK have been complaining about you know the weather you know during the summertime because the Premier League you know with the restart like you know and the Championship like they were all been playing you know in the summertime and they're like oh it's just so hot out there and you're probably just like you're like yeah that's not hot that's not hot in any way. I, I can I can believe it honestly because I mean we without without going on too much about it we we ended up training in the morning so the traditional way was in the evening because you sort of bypass the heat. But the humidity out there was, uh, oh, it was incredible. And I remember my first session and I was slightly ill as well. So I, I flew over and had a bit of a flu. Um, I know that sounds crazy saying that now with, with the, the situation we're in, but it was just a standard flu. Um, and yeah, I remember I was feeling a bit under the weather and the heat hit me as soon as I woke up and I thought, I'm going to struggle here. Um, and I was, because the time difference as well. So I was all over the place a little bit. And then when I was working, I remember thinking, cool, I'm asking these these guys to do this. But they're obviously acclimatized and they're used to it. But I was struggling about half hour in. I couldn't I couldn't believe it. I was, you know, sweating. I was I was uh, I felt weak, but it's yeah, it's incredible the sun and the heat. But it, again, it's just another new you have to think about your methods, how how strong your warm up yeah. is, your work to rest uh, ratios, your water breaks, it yeah, it just opened up so much. So it was cool. It was cool. Yeah, well, 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 speaking about, you know, um, having to, you know, think about these types of things, you know, one of the things that I really loved about your webinar is that it was really about problem solving and teaching players to, to make decisions on their own and having that happen by developing sessions that really bring it out of the players and bring the coaching points out of the players. So you kind of really spoke about like letting the game be the teacher. I know, you know, we had like a two hour essentially lecture uh, with Franz Hook about... Uh, <laughs> It was, it was a lecture. <laughs> I, I mean, it was unreal. We just like sat there and we just listened. And like, he, he's like, he's like, here's, by the way, 20 minutes of Champions League footage. Why don't you guys just break that down for me in the next day? I'll come back in 10 minutes and uh, you tell me what you guys saw. So um, what, why don't you kind of elaborate kind of what you mean by like letting the game be the teacher? Yeah, I mean, I suppose I'd, I'd say maybe this year, so sort of January onwards. Um, I mean, it wasn't a, a real... Yeah, I suppose, I, I, however I got there, I started to really think about, you know, I suppose my, one way I've put it to people is, I suppose my focus has gone gone away from maybe how good I can kick a ball and how good my service is to how how the players learn. And, and I'm not saying I was, like a year ago, I was just all doing all the serving and stuff. But what I mean by that is, I really tried to delve into, you know, what makes them tick, getting to know the players. And then, coming from that is right how can they you know I, I've never been a big believer of sort of commanding and you know like a command style of coaching do this do that you know you see a lot of and each to their own but you see a lot of coaches you know they tell goalies when to get set and they and they almost commentate through the game and through the session which is you know each to their own like I said so I, I've never been like that anyway but I, I found myself stepping away from that so much this year and then I found myself going away from I suppose drilly stuff. So you know, through through cones and into into a, like a four yard goal to more just games and just throwing them in a game, and not not necessarily like sink or swim stuff and and you know just letting them fail, but trying to give them methods and coping mechanisms to figure it out. And, um, and like I said, and I'll show you in a bit. You know, whether you do that for your session design, like your the space you're using, or whether you whether it's like a, an individual challenge that you get two people working against each other. I just thought it was better coming from them than it was sometimes better coming from me, if that makes sense. So, yeah, I'm just really interested in how, how clever we can be and, and almost rather than me telling him to, to use the inside of his foot and play it there, surely my, my drill or my game can encourage that without me having to say it. And I, I just think because you can make them quite robotic and get them yeah. doing the same thing. You know, even, even tonight, where, bless them, we had, we had the under-12s in tonight and... Um, Hopefully I'm not offending any of them, but they were very much, you know, the shout of back foot, give it to my back foot. And, and I, you know, I was sort of saying, well, one, I'm mostly not going to hear that in a game. And two, do you really need to tell me you want it at your back foot? You can maybe use your palm to show me that. Right. And, and, then, and then you can maybe use your voice for maybe some really specific detail, as in, you know, punch it or, or set me so I know you want it a bit slower. So, yeah, I'm just really interested in how, how we can, how players learn, how people learn and how we can be clever with our design, I think, if that, if that hopefully is a clear uh, to, to you. No, I mean. No, yeah, and we always talk about here, it's it's not that black and white. You can't joystick players, especially goalkeepers and stuff like that. Like, yeah. 
you know, nothing's going to, the service back to you is never going to be perfect, never always going to be perfect, although you hope it is, like, you know, and to put them in those situations where, you know, let them learn, let them make mistakes, let them come out of it, figure it out, you know, and stuff like that, instead of just hearing a coach just tell them what to do nonstop, nonstop. So a lot of times there are multiple decisions in, in a situation. It's not just the way I see it or the way you see it. You know, they might, there, there, are, there are different solutions. Yeah. You know, that's actually a really, a really good point, Saskia, that you brought up in regards to, it's not about the way I see it or you see it, but it's, there's just different solutions. And I think, you know, one of the things is that because of the fact, you know, and obviously, you know, it's not everything, but the fact that you did play at, at the highest level, you know, I think you come across it a, a little bit differently than a lot of goalkeeper coaches do, in which case, because you know that you have to figure it out out there because you've been in that situation before, you know? Yeah, but I was also given the tools, like, I was given the tools to make those multiple decisions and, and the trust was put in us, like, you know, and then if you make the mistake, you know, we'll talk about it and stuff. But, you, you know, Tony, none of my coaches were ever like, I am, you know how much I hate coaches that do that. And even if they're field player coaches that just sit there on the sideline and they tell kids where to pass the ball, what to do, and they're just joysticking and it's just nonstop. I'm like, what do we do all week? We practice all week. So that when we get to the game, the tools that you've given them in practice, they can let them, let them think for themselves, let them do for themselves. Trust your coaching and trust that, you know, their, their decision on the ball might be a different thing than you're seeing but actually it might be right um, and allow it to flow. Um, I, I, I can't stand that. I can't even be near coaches that do that. I have to go walk or something. So you got to go to Matt's sessions. You'll have a good time. You'll have a good time. You'll be like, Oh, this is, this is, this is what I'm looking for right now. Um, I, I want to talk about that, Matt, cause I want to talk about like, how do you develop these sessions that empower the goalkeeper? Because I think a lot of times people get concerned. They go like, Oh, well, he's just, he just throws the ball out there and just lets them go for it. And it's like, no, it's, it's not that. Like, you have to be pretty organized how you put these sessions together. Yeah, I couldn't agree more, 100%. I mean, you do hear stories about clubs and academies, and, and again, each their own, where they, you know, they let the players do it, and that's great. But I think it's, it is mostly the skill of the coach, one that you know your players, so you know whether they are going to maybe cope or not, and you've got, you're almost ready to interact if you have to. But that is the key thing. I think you've got to be... You've got to know when, how, and why you want to help them. Uh, and so I'm, I'm all for letting it, letting it happen and, and be player-led. But I suppose, yeah, while Saskia was, was making her points and some great points, it got me thinking about your original question as to, to maybe my thoughts on it always. I think it all started when I was really looking into sort of, you know, the, the perception, action, coupling sort of uh, theory and, and, and then also what, what is our environment, you know, telling us. So how, and then I suppose it flipped, I flipped it a bit in, in the sense of how can we get our environment telling the goalies what to do? Do you know what I mean? And again, making it a safe and, and, and one where they can make a mistake. And, 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 you know, it's great at Birmingham, to be fair, because when, when I did come in, I was, I was pleasantly surprised by a number of things. And one of them was, to give you an example, uh, when, it, you know, when the goalkeeper's distributing the ball, you know, they're really happy if it goes wrong. Uh, as long as the if the intent was right but the execution wasn't you know that's that was a nice way of putting it out for and I thought that's right because the kids they're not going to get I don't get everything right and I'm 31 uh, so it's just it's just having that environment where you can you can um, you can let them try like trial and error and and then but also again it's it's important you don't coming back to it you don't just let it happen obviously if it happens eight nine times they kick <laughs> it off the pits and <laughs> then there's got to be, you know, a point where you maybe help them because they need help yeah. or there's got to be a point where you give them a, a clue or whatever it might be, or you, you change it a little bit. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not an advocate of just, you know, crack on and let them do it. And I'm just going to sit here and have a tea uh, or, oh, or a coffee. Uh, uh, so yeah, I think, I think it, again, it's the skill of the coach to find the balance for me, but it, you need to know your players obviously, because you need to know like little Johnny might be able to cope and you know, he'll figure it out. Whereas, Little Robert, most probably, you can see him struggling a bit and you know he's going to maybe need help from previous times you've tried this. So you just got to be clever with it, I think. I can also just see it in your face right now. You're like trying to think you're like, there's, whole, there's no Robert or Johnny in the academy. I right? don't think there is. I don't <laughs> think there is. So I've, like, I've done well there. Well, uh, while that's going on, you know, um, I, I like the fact that you brought that up about letting them fail because Saskia brings that up all the time. She says, you have to let them fail. And all these joystick coaches who don't allow them to fail, they're going to fail in the game. And if they've never dealt with failure, 
they're not going to know how to respond to it and how important that is. Yeah, I mean, you have to, you have to, in a sense, again, I agree, like, if they're failing six, seven, eight times, you're not sitting there having a the tea, you know, <laughs> but um, in order to let them fail is to let them un figure out the, the proper way and to be able to understand why they're doing something, the reason they did it right and wrong, what they did right and wrong themselves, instead of just like listening, going in one ear and out the other, um, doing it right once and, and not understanding why it was right. And so, you know, you learn through trial and error in every sport, um, no matter what you're doing. So for anybody to like sit there and just, you know, not allow that organically to happen, um, you know, I think it's a mistake. Yeah, you know, one thing I, I used to do, which was a big mistake when I was a younger goalkeeper coach and I was just learning, learning how, to, how to be a coach, is I would hop in, I would hop in the goal, I would take the goalkeeper out, I would hop in the goal and I would start moving and showing them where they should be moving. But again, this was brought up uh, actually by, uh, by Stephanie LeBay from NC Courage uh, a few weeks back. And she says, you know, no moment is going to be the same as the other moment. So you're basically, what you're doing is you're throwing concept at a young goalkeeper and then you're trying to get them and they're going to, they're going to go in there and they're going to replicate the movement patterns that you were doing, but the movement of the ball is going to be completely different. So you know, they're not in the moment of the game. And, and how important is that, Matt? Yes, it's massive. And, and while, you were, while you were saying that, I was just going back to, you know, the, the joystick coaches. And I think, and I'll be the first to admit it, I've been there. I think why we, and certainly why I done it, maybe when I was younger, is I don't think coaches sometimes are comfortable with their sessions looking messy. So if you can imagine, if you're going to commentate and, 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 and almost guide them and talk them through it, then it's going to look good most probably nine times out of ten so then it, then it looks good doesn't it so I think you know whereas now I quite like chaos I like I like the madness as long as there's a like a rationale behind the madness of course you're not just you know again throw a bag of balls in the middle and you know carry on lads um, as long as they're and again if, you know again if anyone comes over and watches and, and they're almost saying well why are you doing this why are you doing that you need to have the rationale behind it so I just think yeah you, you've got to um, you've got to allow them to figure it out and just have different you know, coping mechanisms ready, different challenges ready, different levels ready. And that, I suppose it links into what we're talking about. You might have to strip it back a bit. You might have to, it's too easy. You, you, you bump it up a few. So I don't know if that answers your question. I think I've got a bit lost there. Was that what you were sort of? No, 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 that is. And you're, you're, right. dude, yeah, yeah, no, no, that's absolutely, man. I mean, it, I think I, my favorite thing was, it was just, you were saying throwing the bag of balls out there because I was like, you know, that, chaos. <laughs> Okay, guys, go, go off and do your thing. I'm, gonna, I'm just grabbing a tea right here, and I'm just going to watch you guys as, as you figure it out. Um, my favorite is like when, uh, when team coaches don't have a goalkeeper coach, and they do that. They throw a bag of balls, and they say, hey, goalkeepers, go off for like 20 minutes and do something with these, uh, these balls and these cones, and we'll see you guys in a, in a few. Uh, that, and that, have you ever seen what little kids do when they do that? They stand there, and they just throw the ball to each other. And oh, my like, God. And they're not even doing anything properly, and they're just having a conversation, and they just like this, and you're <laughs> there's nothing funnier than watching like a warm-up when like at like a youth match like a, especially here in the united states in these youth tournaments where like they either had a parent warm them up because there's no goalkeeper coach prevalent and the, the team coach is too involved with with the team warm-up um or they're just off on their own or and, just go warm each other up before the game yeah. oh my gosh it's volleys and sling throws for 20 minutes and then, and then they hop in the goal and then they just get just shattered because it's like shot to the side, side netting, side netting, side netting, because they haven't done any sort of progressions whatsoever. And I uh, make sure with our club teams here, cause I, you know, couldn't be at every game, um, that they, they all go through a pregame. They all know it. They know exactly boom, 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 what they're doing. If I'm not there and stuff, is the quality very good? Probably not. I'm not there, but they have a head coach that can look over and get on them about it. Um, but um, you have to do that as a coach, you know, especially with in, in the U.S. if you're in those club situations and you're the only goalkeeper coach for a club, you know, you have to make sure those things are set in place because that is what's going to happen. The coach is going to be like, you guys go warm each other up and then just throwing the ball back and forth and hitting volleys until the team decides to shoot on them. But by the way, I want to bring that up because there was a comment in the comment thread yesterday 
um, after you know announcing what this topic was going to be today. And somebody wrote out, they said, oh, that's fine and dandy for what Matt does at Birmingham in a professional academy, but like I'm a youth coach here in the United States and I could never do what he's doing over there. Matt, can you, can you kind of explain how, I mean, for my, 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 personally for me, that's just laziness because the game is the game and you can find ways to, to make it work. So um, do you necessarily need an entire team to, to train the way that you're training your keepers? Uh, I suppose, yeah, I mean, you need them to be on the same page. I think they've got to understand what you're doing and why you're doing it. So the, there's no mixed messages. They're on the same page a little bit. Like Saskia said, you know, there's times when we're not there. So that has always been a bugbear of mine is the, you know, the 10 in front of them get loads of info, but, but does he, you know, behind them. So one thing I've done, and I'm not saying that anyone can do this and, and that I'm great and this is all, fine and dandy but I think it's your job to upskill the others around you as well to educate them as well um, because again it, you know you you can do everything you want with the goalies but if you want it to be like collaborative and and like a smooth transition for me that's like a big part of the puzzle as well so there's no point me telling my goalkeeper that I want him to play this far off of his line and as soon as he comes on the pitch he's telling him no you know get back there I'm, I'm, I'm working on you know, dropping deep or, or whatever it might be. So I think, yeah, one, one thing we did do at, at Birmingham, which which was really received well, was just presented to them about our, I suppose, our methodology, what we do, why we do it, and how they can help as well. So we did touch on, you know, when he is during the game, one, you should know what he's working on. Like, like for example, his own plan. I don't know what you guys call them over there, but we call them like ILG, so individual learning guides. So they need to have an understanding of what they're working on and how they might be able to help them. And then also just a general background, like knowledge of the things we look for. So a key one that I thought when I first came in, that they're all really deep. And as soon as the transition um, between having the ball and losing the ball, every goalie just like shot straight back to their, to their goal line, right? So I just thought it doesn't need the goalie coach being there to affect that. You know, you can encourage the goalie, look, you know, stay positive, stay on the front foot, obviously within reason, and just encourage them to do little things. But without maybe educating the others again without sounding like this masterful teacher and you're educating everyone you know if you don't if you don't have a desire or a passion to help others around you understand what you're doing like you're swimming against the tide a bit to use a phrase I think so yeah to, to answer the guy that maybe had the question I don't know what his environment's like but just try and maybe reach out and have a coffee with someone and say look can you look out for this can or it might be like how much space we have or well, next week can I have this because I want to do this can we work together just stuff like that. I, I love what you said right there because I mean, personally, that that's something that I had made a mistake of in the past when I was a when I was a younger goalkeeper coach is making excuses, making excuses for my environment, making excuses for my resources, and using that as a crutch on why things were the way they were, as opposed to trying to see how I can change the culture, how I can change the environment. Um, because Saskia, you know, you've been in these situations before, uh, you know, throughout throughout the years where you've had to go in there and you've had to change things in order to, to make it work for, for what you envision for the, for the kids. Yeah. I mean, absolutely. I mean, uh, the environments I've had, there, there hasn't been a goalkeeper coach. So, so kind of going in and building that from, from the grass up is, is awesome. But also, you know, you know, like Matt said, like you have to have that communication with the other coaches and everything like that to understand what, what, so their keepers are looking for what the terminology what's going on and that they can speak up but you know it, it kind of blows my mind sometimes when I come when I would come back from the weekend and I would be at a couple games and somebody would come back and they'd be like a coach would break down a goal that happened and how they saw like how the keeper should have handled it and then looking at video or something I'm like you have no idea what you're talking about like you know, like it's kind of it kind of it's crazy a little bit to me and so really you know, part of that is, you know, we have to kind of all be on the same page and educate as much as we can um, our, our head coaches on what their individual goalkeepers are doing, what they're looking for, like, and, you know, how to implement it and stuff. Because some of them, that, they honestly really don't know what to do. Yeah. Like, they don't. Sorry. And, and, it, and, and, it, and, it, and it And it is really scary. Like, uh, Matt, is that just a, is that just something at the, at the youth amateur level or is that something that you, you even see at the higher levels? I think it's starting to come really prevalent. Yeah, I think 
the you know you see a lot of like the, um, the like the Premier League teams in the country. Well, a lot of clubs are having a lot more, I suppose, interest in building their goalkeeping department because you not only have like a first team goalkeeper coach. Some clubs you have like an assistant first team goalkeeping right. coach. So I suppose that just shows that people are maybe taking it a bit more serious. And um, from my experience, I mean, I've always been quite a I suppose active and I want to be involved in that side of it so I've always offered my services or, or or picked their brains as in the manager or the head coach about this and what does he think of that so I think I think it's it's a natural thing I think the I mean whenever I again it might sound really cringy if I if I put something on the CV of my CV right I'd always put professional like football coach I don't because I think we're football coaches first and foremost but we most probably specialize in in goalkeeping and that's where we can, we've got to be, um, what's the word, we've got to be competent at the outfield stuff, 100%. And I think that's getting more and more. Um, and then I think just bringing it all together, you've got to have a knowledge of that, but you've obviously got to specialise in the goalkeeper. So I can only speak from my experiences and the people that I know and the courses I've been on, everyone's really getting like more responsibilities, more roles, but not through just, you know, oh, he can do that, just through them putting themselves forward, them upskilling themselves improving their knowledge um, and just seeing it as a, an important part of the goalie coach, I think, being that football coach, but you do the goalkeepers as well. Um, that makes sense. I want to get back to gamification and, uh, and keeping, keeping things real, letting the game, you know, um, be the teacher, because there's a question right here in the comment. Uh, it's uh, from uh, our friend uh, Yuda Nomura uh, from Japan and uh, at New England Revolution uh, now um, with the second team. And he's saying, uh, when you're working on handling, would you use a volley or half volley anymore? Or is all your service now for both of you guys coming from the ground because it's more realistic to the game? Uh, whoever wants to take this. I, That's uh, good, you want to go on. I use all, all three. <laughs> all three? I use all three depending on the situation. Um, uh, usually my vo if I'm volleying, it's usually like just in a warm-up or in like a, like a specific – like a couple specific drills I have, um, then it'll move into a half volley depending on like the pace and what I want done. Um, and then from the ground, but like Matt said, like I find myself less and less serving the ball, like, um, with UCLA and everything, like I have players that, um, are rehabbing stuff. I bring them over and, um, I have them do the shooting, do, do even, you know, even the warm-ups for the goalkeepers and stuff like that, the goalkeepers warm up, you know, they'll hit the balls to each other um, and everything just so I can kind of, I can assess and watch as opposed to just like, you know, knocking volleys, knocking half volleys. But I, it really, for me, it's, it's all encompassing. It depends on where you're at in your, in your drills and your warm-ups, what you want done and everything like that. Um, but definitely it can't just be one. Like it can't just be, I'm just going to hit the ball out of my hands all the time because that is unrealistic um you know so it, you have to mix it up there is isn't kind of is no one answer to that in my opinion in my opinion I'm yeah interested. matt thoughts yeah i 100 percent agree i think there's there's no black and white and this is a lot of gray for me it's um i i think you, it's quite a hot topic at the moment i think you know you, you have all the, the twitter police and, and they say oh he's volleying the ball at him is that realistic and i think we've got to be careful because I think you've got to be mindful of how far down the continuum you'll go with it. Because will we ever lose the volley? I don't, you know, I don't think so. Why? There's always a place for it. Uh, I've worked at like first team level, and and on a Friday you're telling me you're never gonna the goalie's never gonna want what 20 volleys before he goes in maybe, or or just to feel sharp. You know, we're never gonna lose that. Uh, but I'll I'll come on to it in my my presentation in answer to the fella. Sorry, I forgot his name. Fella's question. Um, I, I, similar to Sasko, I, I try and be clever with it and use both. And, I, and I'll give you an example in this session. Do you want me to, to jump yeah, on yeah, this Yeah, 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 yeah. Jump on the session. Let's pull it up. Let's do it. This is it. not magical. This is very, uh, listen, I'm a, less is more for me. <laughs> so don't get the popcorn out and be thinking this is uh, a <laughs> No, this less, is is show. More for, less is more for me too. All right, let me just share this. and. Uh, if it's just a bag you. of balls and, got, and kids just grabbing <laughs> balls. <laughs> that would be awesome. Though. That would be amazing. <laughs> He's like, less is more, man. Here's just a bag of balls. Here's some kids grabbing the balls, and I, I handed them 10 cones. Let's see what they come up right. with. Right. You can see that, I believe. Oh, Matt, you, yeah. went, you, went, you, went, you went to the wow. nth degree here. Look at this. This is unreal. 
Listen, if you're going to invite me on, I've got to put your logo on, haven't I? So um, I love it. I've got to do it. I don't know where I got the other image from. It was on Google somewhere. So I just thought I'd put some type of session on there. Anyway, I'll, I'll breeze through this. And, and yeah, for anyone um, watching, uh, just question anything, jump on anything. I'm not saying this is the only way I'll do it. This is, I suppose, the gamification stuff and the session design stuff. I think it's more just maybe another string to your bow and that's the way I see it. I don't do this all the time. Uh, it's not for everyone, but um, just, yeah, if you disagree, agree, just jump on. So these are the things that I sort of put together. I won't read them out word for word, but the people watching and, and yourselves in the, in the chat, you can have a look over it. So I suppose these are the things that have been floating around in my, <laughs> my small brain over the last uh, six or seven months, I believe. Um, just things I've been just reflecting over, I suppose. So in terms of the regress or progress, I'll be interested to know what you guys think of this, actually. I got to a point where I was thinking, you know, with the warm up and the, whatever you want to call it, the prehab, the activation, they're always really high tempo. Uh, I don't know, it could be a game of throw head catch, for example, and you're putting on loads of different constraints, challenges. And, and again, I don't know what you think, but we got to the end of, let's say, a 15 minute drill. And from a physical, from a, I don't know, a cognitive side of you, they were, they were really like high end, like really on it and not fatigued, obviously, but, but like fired up and ready to go. And then I'd always, I'd always plan my sessions like this. So I'd always go into, into this sort of first one. I'd always have like a, a nice technical drill. Again, if you were going to scaffold it and you were going to build it, you'd link it into your, your topic, your objective, and then you give the goalies a chance to, you know, have a feel of what they're coming into in, in a more, in a more isolated way, like I've put there. Uh, but, but the more I looked at it, it was most probably more, you were coming down a level, but then you was going to go back up a level for your theme game or your drill or whatever you want to call it. And then you've got your further progressions. And then the last bit is when you're joining up with a team. So again, I'm not saying that this is the only way. And again, I'll be interested to hear what you guys think, but you know, why go down to come back up? What about if we keep it the same level? Uh, you might keep it the same level physically, but could you raise it from a cognitive point of view, maybe? Uh, I'm interested to know what you guys think and how you've done it. Toss, you want to add on? Go ahead, Mike. Okay. So I, I actually I actually love that because I think that that is something that I've, I've recognized a lot of times uh, when I'm watching other goalkeeper sessions is that there is this high level of intensity during the warm-up activation and it drops during that second progression or the first progression, basically, into the activity. Um, and I think a lot of it is because there's just over-explanation. Over-explanation in that first progression of, or, or trying to bring out so many different coaching points in order to coaches. I think they think that that, like, that first level is in order to get them ready for the themed game or the drill that you're, that you're talking about. Um, I think that there's a way to make one and two feel more, um, for lack of a better term, fluid if that makes any sense, Matt, so that it's yeah. not, so that it's not, it doesn't feel so stagnant because I agree with you. And I've, I've been a culprit of this myself personally in the past. And then I've noticed that because of that, I've had to reintroduce that level of activation and competitiveness once I get to, to the drill, because they kind of fell back. Um, you know, and I think a lot of it is overcoaching, you know, Saskia, I don't know how you feel about that. Well, I agree with you. I think that, you know, within that first part, like that, that's repetition, activation, getting them to that level, getting them all in and see that technical skills and everything. The level and the intensity drops because there is so much explanation. There is like, it's more um, depending on what the theme is and everything like that. So, and it, depending on how you're doing this, like, do you have, you know, are there several goalkeepers? Is this for the team? Are like, are they, are they waiting around? Like you went from a warm up, a training session where it was like rep, rep, um, repetition, repetition to all of a sudden that being a bit stagnant. Um, um, so to find a way to kind of make that flow a little better. But I mean, at the end of the day, it is, it, you know, I, th I think one of the things, I mean, but that, that's, that's a really key right there because it's very hard. Like Matt, like if you're doing, if, if you're doing set pieces, it's very hard to get that same level of activation and, and, and activity as you are in the warm up when you go into set pieces, it's going to be a lot of, it's going to be a little st standing around. So like, let's take, so let's take an example like that. Okay. So you're doing set pieces. Uh, so we're doing, um, you know, um, 
channel service coming in? How do we make that? So you talked about gamification. Um, how do how do we do how do we gamify that so that it is it isn't stagnant, and yet, so basically, I think the whole idea is we're trying to find a way to make one through four a fluid s session, yeah, 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 rather than separate separate compartments. But I think that usually what you find in this, especially if you're if it's not just goalkeeping, if you're integrating a team situation into this, so if it's if it's um, you know free kicks or whatever it is. You, it's funny because if you look at one and you look at four, you know how high intensity one's going to be and how high intensity four is going to be. And that's usually how practices always go for goalkeepers where there's that, okay, crossing and finishing at the end and the warm ups like intensive. And then there's this like kind of like lag in between. And, you know, how do you, how do you keep that level up? I don't know if you can, to be honest, it depends on the theme of the practice. It depends on like, if I look at it in a UCLA concept or something like that i'm like okay like i usually know that you know i have the goalkeepers for this amount of time in the beginning and then we go into what do we go into something that it's a little stagnant and then we go into like a small sided game where they're more involved or you know or and then it's always some sort of a crossing or shooting and finishing so it does ebb and flow um yeah. i don't really know if i have the answers for you on this. <laughs> what i'll what i'll jump in and, and say michael is is it's a good point and and where what got me thinking about this was we all have our own um, issues uh, challenges in our environments so what got me really thinking about this was the the issue of time and the issue of space which should be quite relatable to people i'd imagine so you i heard you made a point about one and two so if you've got an hour for example let's say we go 15 15 15 15 right uh, the session I'm going to give you an example now is, uh, and it was a bit of a light bulb moment for me. And maybe four years ago, I'd have most probably kicked up a fuss, whereas now I'd most probably try and figure out a solution because I'm a bit further down the journey. Um, I'm, I'm at it where can I get two and three together? And that's what I mean by let the game teach the technique. So I had, a, I had a Zoom with someone who just reached out and and I got, I got his understanding as well, why can't this be in this, for example? And, and I'll come on to it, so stay with me. So this was... Uh, really basic. This was a session where I had, um, actually, I think it's a video first, so I'll let you read that for a second. Uh, so I had 30 minutes for this session. It wasn't 30 to 40, it was 30 minutes. Uh, the topics were playing around and into, uh, and again, the tactical stuff, which was with the team, um, they, they were working on that as well, when to play around the pitch, when to play uh, into higher areas of the pitch. And their technical work was aerial receiving. So I looked at it and thought, right, if, we're, if we were working on specifically that, goalkeepers playing into people well it ties in quite well to that uh the issue that i had was i only had 30 minutes and i had like quite a long linear i was i was left with a small channel in our dome so i'll let this play it's like a minute long where's uh, the bag oh there's the bag of balls right there okay good. there's the bag of balls okay. yeah, uh, so so you can sort of work it out i sort of had hopefully you can see that red dot on the screen i had this sort of channel here and believe it or not as we all Get it? This is a warm up in my session, so that was another little issue that I had, which was fine. So with my topic, um, wait, wait, hold on. The team is tra doing their warm up in the middle of yeah. your your space. Really okay. tight space, yeah. Really, we had loads of kids in there at the time. Again, rather than kicking up a fuss, uh, not not that that's my nature anyway. To be honest, um, I I just sat down and thought, right, these are my topics. How can I use the space I've got mm -hmm. to my advantage? So so I'll let I'll let this. This is like another thirty seconds. But there is like a, a keynote slide after this to give it a bit more clarity, I think, hopefully. So there's three goalies. They've got two goals in the middle. Mm -hmm. They're playing it down, down the sides of the, excuse me, the sides of the pitch. And then they also move on towards the end, which is coming up pretty shortly. They end up clipping it over the goals into the small goal. Uh, again, loads of, uh, loads of touches. No one standing around. No, yeah. um, no bus stops waiting for a touch because I had 30 minutes and, and I'm not a fan of that anyway. I think this is the one where he kicked it over. How Again, old are these boys? Challenge. This was under 11 and no, 10s and 11. These were 10s and 11s. I think that's pretty finished now. So I'll give you a little rundown of, of that. So again, where we're teaching, again, going back to the person that had the question, um, with the volley. So what I started to do, so this was like, just to get a general feel, let them play. So you had the goalie in the goal who could, again, work on supporting position so he can go far side, he can go that side. He plays out, he gets it back. Again, he has, you know, m moving with the ball, which I'm a big fan of goalies getting on the ball and you know, being yeah. active with it. 
And then, so in terms of the around stuff, playing around the pitch, obviously the technique that you'd want them to use would be the inside of your foot. So again, rather than me going in and set, you know, the traditional one would be one goalie here, one server there, one server there, you play in, you play out, you know, repetitive, robotic. But just by me integrating this channel, you know, made them have to go really accurate so they couldn't just smash it and they couldn't just not take too much care. So they had to play it down the side of the channel. And then if you talk about just being active and on the move, this goalie was just supporting. So the next bit was, again, I'm big on challenges and, and giving them um, like levels and different scoring systems. Because for me, they're kids and they need, they need something to get them going. They need, they need, they, they want to have fun. So you've got, you've got to get them going with it. So if I look at the, the, what I've written there, so we had, um, yeah, so a point for a successful clip and a catch. So, so the, um, if you talk about the volley, this one was where the goalie played to uh, the blue. And if you talk about replacing the volley, this goalkeeper uh, ended up just, sorry, the server struck it back into the green. So if you talk about when am I going to get some passing in, a volley, maybe like a dipper, maybe a striker is facing that first technical bit, the 15 minutes, they, they can do it in here. Um, so I crammed it all together and then again by just by my pitch design um, it enabled them to use the technique so I didn't have to go in and say I want you using the inside of your foot you actually saw them working it out for themselves and thinking right I've got to get it through this tight gap I've got to do it this way um, so there, there's more and more technical points so the, the additional one to this one now is now the goalkeepers are protecting the goal so not only are they now clipping it over uh, these two goals into this goal. So we've moved on to the into stuff. This goalkeeper, as you might have seen in the clips, as soon as he mm -hmm. plays it in, he, he's just jogging around. So he's forgetting about protecting the goal. So I thought, right, we, we can't let him do that. So now if this goalkeeper got caught um, sleeping, if you like, and he was already here, he could shoot and get a point. So again, it's that consequence of not being in the right place. Uh, and if you, if you link back to the technique, I didn't just want him, you know, just lashing it and, 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 I said to this guy, look, if you can hit it off the post and in or hit it off the crossbar and in, you get a certain amount of points. So again, I think that automatically made them think about how am I hitting the ball? So if you want to hit the post, you'd most probably go, there might be people better than me, but inside of your foot, a bit safer, maybe more accuracy, right? And then if you wanted to get a bit of loft on it or a bit more of a driven one to hit the bar and the technique you'd maybe um, require for the clip into, You'd use that technique for the for the uh, for the crossbar one. So it it was loads of consequences. And then even if he missed the goal, as we'll come on to now. So if he missed a small goal and it went to the the blue, he could step in and hit it first time. So again, it just had every, it had all sorts of stuff going on. Not only did I feel like we was working on the technique, they were they were working on shot stopping. They were working on you know they were moving. It was good. They were working on short passes, longer passes. Uh, there was actually a one v one element towards the end. So if if this guy had that, had that shot and this guy caught it, he could then dribble it into that goal. So he has to come around and then protect that goal. So you're working on a 1v1 element. So I think the kids were always thinking, they were always thinking, right, if I, if I don't hit this well and he catches it, I've got to do this. If I don't get it quite right over this goal and it misses that goal, he's going to shoot at me. So I'm a big believer on like consequential learning and there's like a, an action for, a, for something you've done. There's going to be like a, you know, we all say in sessions, if, you, if, you're, if you're not careful with that pass, they're coming straight back at you, that sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, so I don't know what your thoughts are on that first one. I think that was the first one. I mean, has anyone got anything or has anything come through on that on the, the chat? No, I love not. it because everybody's engaged. And you got that center keeper, like, with, the, with kind of the short, short, long concept of, of um, working on your services and everything like that, but forcing the channel so they can't just bang it. Um, yeah. And then, um, then, you know, when you kind of move on from there, having them, they can't get caught sleeping, which we know a lot of goalkeepers do, like in drills and stuff when they're, um, so I love that. I love that concept. I love the different point systems. I do the same thing with, you know, I'll be like, if you hit the bar, you get two points. And people are like, well, why would you do that? I don't, I'm like, because I want a certain type of strike on the, on the ball, um, mm -hmm. you know, and, and no, I just took a bunch of snapshots to see it. <laughs> I think, I think the, the, the thing I just, one thing that really stood out as well for me is the, the amount of thought that they have to go, they have to go through for the technique. So again, then kids will be kids and they'll just smash the ball. But again, I don't think it should be the coach saying, hit it this way, hit it that way. Right. This is my whole point of it is can we, 
can we be clever and plan it? And I'm not saying that's a great session by any stretch, but can we be clever and maybe use the, the, the disadvantage of a space to our advantage? And can we be clever and make them figure it out themselves or make your design of your session, bring it out organically and naturally, no, um, sure. you know, within the right challenge. So, um, I mean, this was another good one as well. So I say good one. I'm, I'm blowing me trumpet here. No, this it's one, okay. When I, when, <laughs> Matt, these are, Matt, these are great, dude. Honestly. I, I was sitting here on my phone like, oh, I like that. <laughs> so when, when I first done this one, so just briefly, it was a similar topic, playing, playing around, but this time it was playing through. Um, and we had some angled shot stopping. So we quite, I, quite, I like coupling up um, topics just because I think they match quite nicely. Uh, the outfield tech was, was combination play. So again, it linked into what we were doing. Uh, so I had four, four goalkeepers and it was um, mixed ages, so 14s to 18s. When I first done this, it was an absolute car crash. No, actually, the first three times, it was a car crash. Um, and what I found was, again, if we're talking about what technique I wanted to use, because these are goals and there's a goalie in goal, what, what's a kid want to do? He's just going to want to absolutely smash it and hit, hit it off the bar and in. So I... I started to think, well, that's not the technique I want them to use. If you're going to play around the pitch, ideally you want to, you know, wrap it around a press. So I just had a bit of a light bulb moment where I thought, right, well, we'll give them a, give them a challenge or in try and entice them to do that without me saying, look, you need to do this. You need to do that. So over time, um, well, let me run you through the drill. So as you can see that again, uh, the perception action thing, I'm really big on just letting the environment tell them what they need to do. So as the ball, um, as, as I, as in this black uh, cone here, or this black marker, as I play it to that side, it initiates the, the red. So it tells that the red goal is going to be pressing him. So again, it's not me telling this man, you know, go and stand this side, go and stand this side. He's now reacting that he's seen that as his trigger. He's now thinking, right, I'm engaged now. So as that ball gets played in, he can get pressed from, from him. And again, the topic is playing around. So playing around your challenges to scoring that goal. But like I said, they were just smashing it. So we got to a point where I said, hit, can you hit the post and in? And you won't get one goal. You'll get five for that one goal. Right. You get five points. So then over time, because they wanted, again, to be accurate. I mean, I, listen, I might be able to do it one in 10 to lace it and hit the post from, from there to there. But if I wanted to really be accurate, I'd shape it with my inside of my foot. Right. And, I, and I, so, so again, you started to see the right techniques come out of the drill just through that small manipulation from me and, and it was and it was really good because not only did you have all four working um you had people pressing each other and, and another and another note i'd say is um i once had an interview and, I, and i'm not ashamed to, to say it that i had to plan a session and it was right so how are you going to get how are you going to get these guys pressing at the right intensity for you and i remember thinking they'll just do it won't they and, and then and then i thought well well no they're not are they so if you've got a Say you've got a top Premier League player there. And I, and I think you can do this with adults as well. You've got to give them some sort of carrot, some sort of, you know, you're going to win something if you do this. So what, what's going to make them press, you know, to a high intensity? Um, so, I, again, I, I said, look, if you intercept it off of this goalie, you get five goals. And if you put these two on teams, what do they do? They work incredibly hard together. They're on it. They're, they're running here. And then you've got your realistic tempo session with your small little intricacies of you hitting the post and hitting the bar. Um, and then not only are you not saying anything because of these markers, everyone knows what they're doing and you haven't got to commentate through it. So it's just flowing quite nicely. Um, and, and one interesting point I put here about beat the game, I, I, Michael, I think you might've been on the yeah. webinar where I meant, basically yeah. I mean, play, players working out your session, you know, before you, and they, they find a way to, to work out what you've done and you almost, Trump yeah, and you're thinking well obviously done that I remember when I first done it um, this guy because everyone was individual um, this guy was if I remember right he was losing and this guy was winning so what did this guy do with his pass to him in there he stitched him up every time because he thought right if he gets intercepted and a goal goes in he loses points because he's letting a goal he then becomes top so I think it's it was it was really clever um, so I think you've got to be clever with coaches like that and ha I suppose the next thing of my journey is I'm trying to work out how can I plan a session with that in mind how can I can I give them any beat the game moments where they can almost figure it out so so that was the bulk of the session and the next one was because we're playing through you could now not only just score in these goals it was you could score in that goal and and if you and if you nicked it and if the ball fell out you could step in and shoot it in any goal you want so one interesting one was this guy got quite uh, confident 
and we talk about consequential learning he ended up pressing really early thinking i'm going to get him here so right. I, I said look it, it another carrot for this guy if you can lob someone because he's not doing his job right i'll give you 10 points for that so what did you have you had this these two really thinking about not being in we hear it all the time no man's land right right so again all the all these little rules and constraints and challenges again i didn't have to go in there and say you're in no man's land he figured out that oh, i'm struggling here because he's just lobbing me so i need to maybe time it a bit better so hopefully that's a bit clearer and you can understand what i'm sort of saying um yeah, I, I, I think, no, Matt, I mean, I, I absolutely love this. And I think this is one of the reasons why we wanted to have you on the show is because it takes a little bit more work on the goalkeeper coach's part. It takes a little bit more effort to, to organize these sessions in this manner. Yeah. But I think in the long run, you're going to, you're going to make a better situational goalkeeper, preventative goalkeeper that actually understands how to, to make decisions. One question I have for myself personally, and, and Suska, I don't know how you felt about this is, do you start and stop in any moment or you just let it free flow the entire time and then discuss the, 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 the activity afterwards? Was that, did you hear me? That was to Saskia. Was that to Saskia? No, oh, that was, no, that was to you. That was to you. That was oh, to, you. to me. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, uh, just, that's okay. I was just getting my charge and my battery's running low. So I, for some reason. No worries. I'm we we got to hop off soon anyway. So. Jump, jump, sorry, Michael, apologies. Say that again. Sorry. What would, Briefly so and I was saying I didn't know how, how Saskia felt about this, but like, what is, do you do this completely free flowing or is there any sort of start and stop when you notice a coaching moment that you want to bring up? Because my only concern playing devil's advocate here is what if it's not going the way you well, want? Well, I think he said like the first time he did it, it was the first few yeah. times it was like a car crash, you know? Yeah. yeah. And I think that once, I, I'm not going to answer the question for you, but I think that I could see by maybe the fourth, fourth time doing it, then they start situations start to solve themselves yeah. which is what you want like like you said you don't have to bring up your no man's land they're figuring it out you know because kids yeah. think yeah. like young keepers think that way like how can i manipulate this game um but you know you're gonna get caught there are other things so i think i can imagine the first time was maybe a bit of a car crash because they were probably like you said just like just blasting it and everything yeah. but then to add those restrictions of no if you hit the if you hit the post well then it forces a certain type of shot or service and a thought process not just i got the ball i'm just going to kick it because that's you know yeah no i i, 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 think, I go ahead Matt. well no i, I was i was just going to say i think it it goes back to the point of being comfortable with your session looking a bit messy and and yeah they're not all going to do it they're not all going to do it well so yeah, the first, honestly, the first two, three times it was chaos and it, it was chaos in a bad way. It was, it didn't look great, but over time, because someone did ask me this, well, surely it takes a while to get up to this level where it's all singing or dancing and they're all pressing at the right tempo and there's posting in shots coming everywhere and, and goalkeepers really thinking on their feet. And, you know, the point I made there, I'm, I'm a big believer on like goalkeepers having like, I call it an escape. So like a, a bit of a skill in their locker to, 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 to deviate away from a player or to step past them with a touch or because when people say they don't want their goalies doing a Cruyff but they might need to have that in their locker for one time in a game so why can't you encourage why can't you encourage it's true though you never allows, know allows them yeah I'm sure you might have done one in your time Sasuke you know I don't know <laughs> I don't think it I remember <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, I just think, you, yeah. yeah but I mean I, um, I have to jump off you guys because I have to do a session but um, keep at it and Make sure this is all recorded because I'm stealing everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll, 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 we'll continue on. Uh, well, Sasuke, uh, thanks. Uh, Matt, th you're awesome. Keep it yeah. up. No problem. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Absolutely. All right. We'll see you in a bit, Sasuke. Bye, guys. Later. All right. So um, continuing on to this, Matt. So what yeah. – so we're talking about the restrictions of the, the field spaces. I love what you're talking about that, and I, I love how the fact that you're showing – that when you're in a tight space, you can still make something of that space and still gamify and still gamify that session. Um, I think yeah. the other thing too is that what we're seeing here is that step two really isn't necessary. Is that we mm. really can just go from one, two and three can, two, three and four can basically be one fluid activity with different, basically different. Uh, for lack of a better term, ways to coach it. Does that make yeah. any sense? Does that make any sense yeah, at all? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Okay. yeah I, th I think we're, 
we obviously we're, we've all got our own it, like i said the environment's different for everyone so it might be a time thing it might be a space thing it, you know it could be anything but just touching on the i know i haven't talked about the gamification too much but you know the, the main thing about it is the engagement from the kid goes through the roof um the reflection from them goes through the roof because they're, they're thinking about everything that's going on and and the gamification, I've only picked it up. On, I must admit, it was, there was a, a lady, and I actually haven't even met her. A lady came in called Amy Price to the club, uh, a, a colleague of ours who we work with at the club as well, called Russell Earnshaw. They both came in and they got, well, they got me thinking, especially uh, Rusty, we call him. Um, and they put on a session in, in our indoor dome and, and they talked about, it was just a real possession-based thing. So you talk about gamification, you know, everyone plays a video game. Every kid plays video games. So it's taking that... Um, that into our world really and, and if you think about i don't know a call of duty or, or fallout i've never played fallout or, or call of duty but they've all got levels and the only way kids learn from that in there is trial and error you know you might you get killed you respawn you can start again so just giving them an environment where there's different levels and and rusty put on a really good session because there was like um you took a, a couple of key points that i took from it. it there was like a banking a banking level so if you're if you're doing a possession game um, you might say you can you can get to 100 passes, but you can bank at every 20. Whereas if you don't bank, like like Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, if you remember that show, yeah. if you don't bank and you're at 40, and but no one said bank, but you lose the ball, you lose, you have to start from zero. So again, it's it's making the kids really think about we're at 60 here, who's going to bank, should we bank, etc. Um, there's like a, a one called like a skill restart. So if you could finish it in two two touches, you you get the ball like stuff like that and just and I think it's good to outline the levels before the session as well so I remember it because the 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 noise coming from the dome at the indoor pitch was incredible and I walked in I was like whoa the, it wasn't coaches speaking it was just the kids because they're so competitive and and they're all engaged on what level we at what rule we at and you give them the outline saying look we can start now at level one which is 20 passes you get a point or do you want to start at level five which is 100 passes and nine times out of ten the kids will always go yeah let's go to, to the harder one and again, it gets them reflecting, oh, we maybe can't do this. Let's drop down a level. So that's like the concept of it. And again, it's not my idea. I've just picked yeah. it up a little bit. And I think we've always done that with goalkeepers. And we're, we're, because we've got smaller numbers, threes, fours, sixes, I think we can be clever with our design and, and how we get them really working the way we want them to work. Well, I got a question about that in regards to the session design, because how do you – so do you start with a traditional template of, okay, these are the coaching points that I want to get across – this is the topic. This is how I would have run the session in the past. How can I adjust this to make this more in this vein? Is that how you start with it? Or because I would think that, it, that it's going gonna, it's gonna to have to start with like a simple concept and then you build from there. Otherwise, you're like you're saying, you're going to get that car crash because you're trying to do too much all at one time. Yeah, no, I, I think I'm still working it out. I'm still at, I've always been a big believer on you know, structuring it the way, maybe the way I showed you with the one to four. But then I thought how, you know, it's great that there's that scaffolding of learning, which is great. And it's linked into the team stuff. So they go from our warm up all the way through to the last bit with the team. And it's all built nicely. And the learning's like layered and layered. But then I just thought, how are they going to cope if it's not layered? How are we, are we doing them a disservice if um, they go straight from a warm up? And, and before you know it, you're getting the shout. And they need to go straight in the goals because whoever's messed up their timing or whatever. So I feel like I'm I'm definitely at a place now where I'm trying to think about this stuff and maybe plan from back to front in a way. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it, but even now from being back in uh, at the club the last two evenings, I'm almost because I've reflected a hell of a lot over the lockdown, like everyone. I'm, yeah. I'm I'm finding myself going back to maybe older methods, but then almost having to give myself a nudge of you said you maybe was going to go away from that. So I'm I suppose there's a little voice in my head that I'm playing around with it a bit at the moment, and um, yeah. I'm not there yet. I, I don't, I do do it still. I do structure it and I've got my aims and objectives and this is what we want. But I'm, I suppose I'm trying to think outside the box a little bit without reinventing the wheel. I'm not well, trying to reinvent the wheel. Well, well here's, here's one thing that, and here's just a, a concern that I have uh, in regards to this is that you need to have some sort of goalkeeping foundation before you can, before you can get to this level. So like, do you have to be, I mean, are you talking about only like you can really only do this with like an academy level goalkeeper, but like if you're working with like a rec keeper or like a lower, you know, lower level, you know, more introductory goalkeeper, like you're, you're not going to be able to go this direction yet. Yeah, no, it's a good point. 
I actually had a, a phone call with, I was helping someone out. So he's actually working in Malaysia and he had the same question, weirdly. It was, a, it was there at this level and, and it's a bit lesser than your academies over here. He's more on my page a little bit. We're very similar and um, just letting, letting gain, lots of game stuff, lots of chaos. And I think he was having, uh, and I won't name him or the club, but he was having a bit of trouble with, you know, your parents looking over thinking it's just, it's just a kick around what, what they're doing. Mm -hmm. But I think you've got to expose, they've got to start somewhere and you've got to expose them. Um, so again, as long as you've got the rationale to say to him that comes over and says, why are you doing this? You can say, this is why I'm doing it. And again, you've got to be happy with it looking messy for maybe 10 goes or, or knowing how you can help them along the way. But I think eventually you'll get there if that's what you want it to be like. So yeah, for the, for the people that are doing it at grassroots, there's no reason why you can't put three goals down as, as like a three goal game or a four goal game, for example, with poles, cones and get it rolling. And you might have one that can just about kick a ball, you know, it's, but how is he going to learn to kick a ball as well? You know, so it's, if anything, it's maybe less pressured, isn't it? The yeah. grassroots stuff, you know, so you can maybe play around with it a bit. Well, that, that's actually one thing. So I, I, I actually was trial and erroring with the gamification at the rec level. Um, you know, I was running these, uh, these, these rec clinics, um, that this, uh, this company contracted me out to do. And, um, one of the problems that I found is that for lack of a better term, the, the level of the rec goalkeeper, not just in terms of to their goalkeeping understanding, but their understanding of their body and how to move and, you know, how to, how to think there's a certain level. No disrespect, there was a certain reason why they were playing at the rec level as opposed to at the, at the competitive, sure. competitive academy level. Um, and I would try to explain these activities, and maybe I didn't do a great job of it, but I found that it was going over their head, that it was just too much, too much over and over again. So, like, what do you do? What do you do in that situation? Do you just say, you know what, I'm just going to either simplify this or, you know what, we're just not going to – I need to go back home and I need to figure this out again before I can present it to them again? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it, again, it's a really, and it's the point that I made at the start where I think we've got to be careful where everyone's, I don't want to say jumping on the bandwagon, but we're all, you know, there's talk of doing either volley. And I think you've got to be careful how far you go with it. Cause there's always going to, like, if you need to really strip it back, cause that's the group you've got, then strip it back and, and it needs to be more prescribed. And there's nothing, you know, who, who's anyone to say, you can't be doing that. You can't, you can't have him standing around because that's just might that might be what he needs at the moment and you need to help him through it. So I think you've just got to be careful that we don't just, yeah, you can't just run into it and this is the way I do it. Um, I think, yeah, you've got to be, you've got to know, I always say you've got to know your audience. You've got to know your group. Yeah. And if they're, if they're way below the level, you might have to just re make it really, I call it Billy basic, really basic uh, and just, get the pictures in their red, get them seeing it, get them, get them doing some form of level of it. And when they get maybe a bit more competent, that's when you can expand a bit. So, you know, yeah. it's, it's funny you brought that up because, uh, you know, Omar, who's obviously not with us right now, uh, unfortunately, he, uh, we've, we've talked about this a lot as in regards to just all the knowledge that was gained during quarantine and coming back to our sessions after quarantine. Yeah. And, and one of the problems that we faced coming back to our sessions is that, and a lot of people I think are coming into this, is that they're implementing things just for the sake of implementing it because they saw that and they're like, oh, that's, that's cool, without understanding why they're doing it and also mm -hmm. not understanding when to do it too, you know, with the, in regards to the, like, first day back from quarantine, like, like you were saying, even with your, with your Birmingham keepers, like, you know, you were, you were starting, you were trying to go back from where they were in March to now, well, there's been this whole, they've been in this whole other environment for these last few months and you yeah. kind of have to build them back to where you had them in March, right? Yeah, well, yeah, to an extent, but I think you've just got to be mindful that they haven't done anything for four or five months. So you've got to, yeah, like, I'll be honest, my, my last two days have been real basic, just have fun, just um, not, not too much coaching, you know, lots of touches of the ball. So that is going to need like lots of repetitive services. So that's what I mean. You've got to be careful how far up and down the continuum you go with it. And there's no right or wrong for me. There's a lot of gray in goalkeeping, but Again, as long as there's a rationale that I'm doing it this way because we've just had COVID-19, they haven't quite done this, this and this. I think they need this. This is why I'm doing it. And um, yeah, there's no right or wrong. You know, everyone's trying to figure out new ideas, but there, there, there's been a lot of good stuff in the past. You can't just ignore it. And there's, there's good stuff for a reason. And I think if you can, 
I agree with you. It's, it's quite dangerous in a way. Uh, dangerous is maybe a strong word, but yeah, I'm the same. There's been loads of information coming in in four or five months. So I personally found it good to just get it all down on a, on a, on a presentation and just try and really, um, I suppose, pick at it and pick the best things that I've got from it rather than just trying to implement so many things. And I suppose the word I'd use is I didn't maybe learn a lot. I felt I think I had a lot confirmed to me that, yeah, I quite like what I do here. I don't quite like this. I'm going to use that rather than I've learned this, 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 this. And I'm going to do all of this in the first week. You just got to be careful, haven't you? Uh, I, I got a couple couple questions before before we wrap up here. Um, and thanks for taking all the time, man. I mean, I know it's really late for you, you know, over That's there, smart. you know, so um, is, uh, is that first off is that a lot of people are hearing this stuff and they're hearing the gamification and they're, they're hearing the competitive elements and the point system and the video games and all that. And they're going like, oh, so this is just for kids, right? This is just for kids. But I think you brought up earlier on that you can do this with the higher levels too. And, yeah. and, and get the same thing out of it. I think they're, one of the biggest issues that I see a lot of times from older coaches um, or collegiate coaches and stuff is that they go, oh, well, if I make it too fun, it's going to seem amateur or it's, they're going to think that, you know, we're not taking this seriously or whatever. But it's quite the opposite, right? Yeah, I think, don't get me wrong, like when I'm saying gamification and when I'm showing these examples, it's not it's not like four to six goalies out there with party hats on and we're all just having a great time. You know, it's an environment yeah. where we demand excellence and like I said, there's consequences to what you do. But yeah, I think everyone needs some form of motivation to do that. We all do what we do right now because we love it or because we want to get better. So you've got to give, you know, the players for me, they, they'll have them, obviously they want to get better, but you've got to give them a reason to run around, not just, yeah, you're going to do, you know, you're going to run around here, you know, try and give them like a carrot to, to go and do it. And a good one is I had, I had some senior goalkeepers drop into my sessions and, and they, they really engaged like in terms of where my head's at now. And they came from maybe, dare I say, it, a bit of a sterile type old school environment to this like games and, and consequences and like four goal games, three goal games. And I'll be honest, like they, they really enjoyed it. And these were, you know, really experienced goalkeepers, like won the Champions League, the multi-millionaires you'd say where's their motivation but they for me that was a nice memory for me because they took to it and they rolled with it and they were really happy and, and they were just smiling so these are grown men 31 32 34 i think one of them was so i think yeah it's not just you know party hats and and we're just you know having having a fun time it's i just think it's being clever with different i think you've got to be different coaches on different days so it was a, it was just a different version of matt that that was on show one day there might be another day where i'm very old school very you know i just think that you've got to adapt to your surroundings a bit and that's are there what I did. are there any any coaching points that you found difficult to 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 get out in a session uh in this manner um put me on the spot good question not i don't think any any jump out i think um yeah i just think that the one i've said before is, is it's hard because when we all like things to go smoothly. So it's, I suppose that's the main thing from this stuff is it might look a bit messy or you might get it wrong or you might have one of them beat the game and they almost, they, <laughs> they go over your head and they've won it already and they, they've clocked what you're doing and they, you know, they've killed your session in a way. So yeah. I just think the more you do it, the more experienced you are at having like another rule up your sleeve or having a, a you know, a, a, a constraint up your sleeve so yeah n none really jump out unfortunately um but i suppose it's more yeah just being comfortable with it looking messy yeah uh, you know I, I think you you brought up a really good point right there because that was something that scared me it was like okay well if they figure it out and where do you go from there you got that deer in the headlights look you're like all right well we're done 20 minutes early guys that's it that, that's it for today you have a uh, you have beaten me. You've beaten the goalkeeper coach. And uh, well, I, we, I had, we just that. quickly, I, I had one, Michael. I had one where it was a two v two game. Uh, so it was six goalies. Yeah. Um, one goalie in each goal, and he had a teammate out on pitch, and then the other pair were on either side of the pitch. So it, yeah, they had to bounce it off the end men. Uh, but if so, the job was the goalie to get it and score in the goal opposite him. Um, but then if if that goalie scored, whoever played it to him got a point for having an assist. Yeah. So I had a really clever kid at one point thinking, well. He's on the same points as me, and I'm on the so we're on the same point. So if I, or sorry, he was leading. So if I if I score, I'm not getting any closer to him because he's going to get a point as well. So I remember it hit me, and I thought, yeah, you're right. So he actually wasn't using the end men, so it completely killed my session, just for him being really clever and, and thinking, well, I'm not going to pass the ball to him and get it off him and score because he'll get a point and he'll run away with the lead. So kids are clever. They're so clever. 
Um, so I'm trying to get to a point where I'm planning some beat the game stuff and almost trying to be uh, bulletproof from that side of it and not letting it happen again. But I think it's a good thing that players can can suss it out because we want them to be thinkers, don't we? So yeah. I mean, you know, that's funny because like when I was when I was a younger goalkeeper coach, I used to get frustrated with that. I was like, you know, especially when, you know, you'd get kids that are just, you know, they're very intelligent and they'll figure stuff out in regards to, well, this is this is working, so I'm going to do this, but it's, it wasn't game realistic whatsoever. Um, but then I realized I was like, well, okay, well, but that means that they're going to be in a in a game. They're going to think of logically what's going to work the best. My my thing with the gamification thing is how do we make sure that they understand that this is really happening. This is the actual game. So they don't think of it as like, I'm just playing Matt's game right now. And then we're playing soccer, you know, to make sure that they, 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 they understand that this is football. This is the game. You know, you just got to relate it, relate it to you, to the game, relate it to your session. So, you know, you, if you switch play that way and you get it back this way and you score off that, you get five points. So in a way you're just encouraging them to switch the play. So that might be your objective of the session, but yeah. it's, um, like I said, it's not like party hats and we're just doing uh, hula hoops with, with some toys. It's, 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 you know, you're making it relatable to the game and to their objectives. And I think you can be clever with it as well. I've, I've done it where I've, had, I've given out individual challenges, which I think is massive. Yeah. Um, but they don't know you're giving them out as well. So I went to one guy and said, he's working on, um, I think it was like diving at feet, smothering at the ball. So I need to give him some opportunities to do it. Again, rather than me prescribe it, I went over to another lad and said, look, if you can score by dribbling it around the goalie, I'll give you five points, but no one else knows about it. So every time he got the ball, he was trying to dribble it around the goalie. So without anyone really knowing it, other than the goalie I said that can dribble it, he was helping me get a coaching point out for that goalkeeper uh, yeah. in a realistic way because he was, he was pumped, he was ready for it because he wanted to score. So he wasn't doing it just because I asked him to do it. He was doing it because he wanted to get five goals and win the, and win the game and not collecting the equipment. Do you know what I mean? Stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. It, it, if that makes sense. So, yeah, no, that kids, makes want, no, like, that, that, no, that makes a lot of sense. And also, I think that you're, when you're talking about in regards to when you're having servers, for lack of a better term, in a session, a lot of times a goalkeeper will think of their when they're serving as not their act active time they'll think of it as like okay well i'm just now part of this act i'm part of this activity but i'm not training right now it's not me training right now mm -hmm. but they're never going to have that when you're when you're training in this in this type of environment because they they have a motivation outside of yeah. just you telling them like well you got to work on your distribution you know where yeah. they go okay you know um no man i i, I absolutely I absolutely love this and I, I love the direction that you're going with this and i can't wait to see how this progresses you know when when you have a full 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 view season again and and yeah. you know and, and the success that you'll you'll see with it um so be before we go matt um i just kind of want to want to wrap up with you right here um if there's any any goalkeeper coaches out there that have you know any any ideas that they want to share or if they have any questions kind of on, on what you did um i don't know what you did with that webinar if you're still continuing to do it or um you mm -hmm. know if you have it have it have it uh if it's available anywhere for anybody to check it out um but where where's the best place for people to reach out to you um you know if they want to kind of yeah. know more about what you're doing yeah no obviously first of all appreciate the invite hopefully um hopefully you found it useful and saskia and obviously it's it's a shame omar couldn't be here but uh, thoughts are with him obviously and then, and yeah anyone that's watching that wants to, to to challenge anything or or just wants a bit of confirmation on something yeah I, mean, I suppose I'm most actively active on um, Twitter professionally if you like uh, so yeah Matt Doyle GK um, but yeah I mean with regards to the webinar I've still got the presentation I mean if, if you had people that reached out that wanted to delve into the well, I mean, I suppose a lot of it was similar to what I've um, what I've I've presented but yeah if anyone's got any questions just hit me up on on Twitter and I'm, I'm, I'm happy to hear anyone, uh, anyone's thoughts on it. So yeah, no problem okay. with that at all. That's, that's awesome, man. Uh, that's awesome. Well, again, man, I really appreciate you guys, you know, you doing this. It's like a 11, 11, 11 right now. What time do you guys, uh, what guys time do you guys train tomorrow? You have a, yeah, no, cause, cause of, cause of the way the first team and we're just obviously keeping our distance with as many people as we can. We've just gone to an evening program. So yeah, we had two sessions, one at five and then they had a bit of gym work and then we had one at, uh, seven thirty, so yeah, it was like a, an hour session. So finished at eight thirty, quickly come home, had a shower, and, and here we are. So yeah, now it's um, it's just a later program at the moment, um, yeah. just for obvious reasons, the current uh, pandemic situation and stuff. So are the boys are the boys separate from their teams, or are they are they training with their teams as well too? 
Yeah, they, no, they're all, we've just got them in small groups and obviously keeping our distance. So, you, you, again, your practice design's got to be, uh, you've got to be thinking about, right, they've got to stay away from each other. So, so yeah, small groups of six um, and lots of, like, technique work. Again, you know what, the main thing is it's just good to see everyone get around everyone again. Um, so, it's just nice that we can start getting there. We're nowhere yeah. near yeah. whatever normal looks like now. I don't know, but we're nowhere near the norm of the norm. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they're just keeping their distance, small groups, um, just really basic stuff. But again, they're, they're back with their friends. They're back doing what they love. Same yeah. as the coaches. So yeah, happy days. Awesome, man. Well, uh, remember guys, contact at insidethe18media.com if you have a guest suggestion or a topic suggestion. Um, this guest suggestion came from somebody uh, who reached out. I forgot who it was, but they said, hey, did you check out that webinar? You guys should totally have them on. I was like, I was already thinking about that. I was trying to find the, the best time possible. Yeah. And I was like, okay, well now we're doing all this youth stuff in the next couple of weeks. Like this is the perfect time to have, have you on, Matt. So we're, we're really excited. Um, Honestly, break a leg. Well, actually, that's probably not a, a good term to use for, uh, for, for the training. Uh, best of luck with the training, uh, with, with everything you got going on, guys. Um, at Goalkeeper Podcast on social media platforms. That's all the time on Inside the 18, guys. And we are out. Later. Yeah!